the president invoking the Civil War with this uh, tweet quoting conservative pastor Robert Jeffress. Reading from it now, if the Democrats are successful in removing the president from office, which they will never be, it will cause a civil war like fracture in this uh, nation from which our country will never heal. Pastor Robert Jeffress at Fox News. That's actually a slight misquote of what Jeffress actually tweeted out. Perspective now from retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters, who's both a student of the Civil War and the author of a number of historical novels about it. Colonel Peters, when you see the president tweet uh, about civil war, retweeting somebody else, uh, misquoting them even, I I'm wondering what your reaction is. One word, sedition. Trump is inciting violence against the legitimate government of the United States and the constitutional order. And Anderson, that is a grave crime. Uh, you can argue about the meaning of treason, what constitutes it, what doesn't. Sedition is very clear cut. And you can ask your lawyers, but to me, this is as, as bald and plain as it could be. But also I have to say that there's not going to be a civil war. So everybody needs to knock that off. I've been hearing people on the extreme right saying it for years. Even if we're, if we're in a situation where the president of the United States is invoking the notion of a civil war if, you know, he, if, if he is not, if he is impeached or if he is uh, not, you know, reelected or, or whatever the parameters he believes, uh, you know, this might happen or this might break out. I mean, anybody who even in, not even going back in U.S. history, in modern times has seen civil wars in countries around the world up close. There's no responsible leader who would ever kind of raise that especially in a tweet, it, it's a, I mean, it is a horrific thing to witness. It, it is countrymen turning against countrymen. Well, indeed. And you have the irony of a draft dodger talking up war. But yes, there have been horrible civil wars. Some are ongoing right now around the world. And they are utterly horrible and, and, and very, very cruel. Um, but Trump is very much in the situation of a developing world dictator in that he's got to stay on the throne to stay out of prison, uh, or in many cases, worse. And Trump, he's afraid. He's a frightened, frightened man. Because if he loses the election, and it's not a foregone conclusion that he will, but if he does, he's gonna face the rest of his life in courtrooms, uh, not at legal bills, perhaps in prison. The, the last time that, that uh, we spoke, you talked about how you, you feel the founding fathers could never have imagined someone like President Trump. Um, do you have faith in their institutions to mete out justice, whatever, whatever that may be, however that justice is, is defined? I hope so. Um, the, the, the Republican Party is a, is a terrible disappointment to me. That was always the, constant, the party of law and order, of the Constitution, of patriotism. And now, with rare exceptions, you see Republicans on Capitol Hill just cowering, just cowering, afraid of Donald Trump this bloated old charlatan who, who never served his country in any capacity, and all these Republican patriots are running to make excuses for him, cringing. And yeah, I know my views are strong on this, but Anderson, I love this country. I don't love it like Donald Trump, just for what I can get. I love this country. It's as good as life gets on this earth, and we are an ungrateful people. And Donald Trump it, it, it is an an embarrassment that cannot be measured. With this president, I mean, it's often been said that, that everything is transactional with him. Relationships are transactional. Uh, clearly, foreign policy is. Um, and he, he, you know, he seems to extend what he did in real estate into the Oval Office. You know, Ukraine, it's not a country that is an ally to the United States battling an aggressor to the United States, Russia, and in need of aid. It's uh, a young leader who may be able to bend to the will and, you know, come up with dirt on the Bidens or on Clinton or whoever. Yeah, and you're certainly right. It's Trump is all about Trump is all about Trump. And I really feel sorry for the people who voted for him, who convinced themselves that this man is a patriot. But I also have to say uh, that in defense of Trump supporters, they were abandoned by both political parties as the Republican Party became the party of high finance, the Democrats became the party of high society. And where I come from, in the coal regions of Pennsylvania, people went ignored, utterly ignored. And Trump, you know, I'm sure he's never read a page of Hegel, the German philosopher, but he got the, he instinctively gets the gist of Hegel and the idea of recognition. All human beings want recognition. 
And what Trump did was give recognition to the mm. people, the electorate, that had been ignored by both parties. And um, I feel sorry for the people in there. I know a lot of Trump voters who even now can't give up. They can't admit they were wrong because their pride's caught up in it. So we're in for an interesting election year. Yeah, Colonel Ralph Peters, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.